This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. You're listening to Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. To call the show, dial 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. This is MPB Think Radio. Good morning. Welcome into Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. I am your host, Jay White, here today with Jeremy Thompson, owner of Computer Doctors and Phone Surgeons in Hattiesburg. Wiltz is out this week. Jeremy, good morning. How's it going? Good morning, Jay. Things are well here. How about you? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. I uh, got a chance to get out of town a little bit. Uh, I don't know for, for what that's worth. Most everything is shut down everywhere, so it's kind of uh, got a chance to kind of look at the skyline in Birmingham and Nashville over the last few days for whatever that's worth. But uh, Definitely nice to, to get away from all the chaos for a little while. It, it is. It is. Yesterday I got to drive uh, the entirety of that way back. So that was a chance to listen to a lot of things and kind of clear my mind a little bit. And I appreciate my uh, the, the one of my four children that elected to go on the trip to you know, allow me to do that. Anyway, there's plenty uh, going on today. And of course, we know that you've got uh, tech issues as always. It is the way of the world. One eight seven seven mpb ring is the number. That's 877-672-7464. That's the number to call in. You can go ahead and get going with that now if you have uh, some questions that you need to uh, pass this way. Jeremy, anything? Uh, it's, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been on the air. Anything uh, interesting or has it been kind of uh, same old, same old uh, at the store there? Uh, definitely some interesting things have happened. I've had, uh, several major outages that I've been able to swoop in and figure out what exactly, uh, was causing the problem, uh, with a couple of local companies lately. Um, I got to deal with a really fun networking issue on Monday, uh, at a place called Once Upon a Child here in Hattiesburg. And, um, I, I really like going in and resolving network issues because nothing makes me feel like, more intelligent than narrowing down the issue and going, Oh, Hey, I know what caused this. I know how to fix it. And it's fixed. Absolutely. There's nothing. I mean, you're in the business of fixing stuff for folks. When you're able to solve that problem, that's gotta be a good feeling. It definitely helps. I've also got, um, a couple of, uh, rigs that I'm going to be building for some people. So I'm, I'm always excited about custom builds. I love building computers. I love working with new high performance hardware, um, optimizing them and building them the right way. Um, you know, when, when somebody puts their own computer together or even when they get a company to do it, uh, it doesn't mean that everything was done the right way. You know, you can, you can put all the components in your computer and they will operate at a minimum and there won't be any problem. But, you know, when a guy like me gets involved, I go in there and I go, Hey, your RAM's not clocked to its highest speed. Mm. Your GPU is not running at its, its, uh, maximum potential. So, you know, I go in there and figure out how to tweak those things to uh, to the maximum ability of the hardware. That way it's not killing it, but it's not uh, pushing it too far either. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I've got a, a really cool build coming up. I've often heard about overclocking uh, RAM and different things like that. Is is For folks, for the un- uninitiated or for the DIYers, is that worth digging into or can you get yourself in some trouble there? Because it seems like if you Google it there, oh, it's so easy. You know, <laughs> there's any of several links well, that can walk you through the process. I just don't know if I trust myself, even with instructions. 
most of the time when you're dealing with overclocking, you're not going to like permanently damage anything. Um, you may have to reset your motherboard. So it always, it's always good to know how to actually go in there and uh, reset those uh, settings so that um, you can fix the issue. Now, a lot of times boards these days, especially the, the more spiffy gamer high performance boards, when you make a change, if it does not accept the change, then it will sit there in kind of a, a limbo state, and then it'll say, hey, it doesn't look like those changes were accepted, so why don't we try something else? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's always, you know, it, there's a lot of little tweaking, and then most of the time, if you clock your RAM incorrectly, you're not really going to find out about it until you get to Windows or until you start running uh, high memory demand programs. And then you'll notice that either your system will become very unstable or it will just altogether crash. So, you know, it's my job to go in and make sure that we we reach the uh, the the line right before we get to crashing and we push the, the hardware as as hard as we can without denigrating its uh, its its longevity. Yeah, absolutely. So there's uh, plenty going on today. Uh, there's lots that's happened in the last week or so. Uh, you can give us a call with your issues if you have any, 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Jeremy, uh, a lot of interesting thing goes, things going on, in, uh, including uh, the the class action suit that has been settled with Apple with regard to their intentional slowing down of phones a few generations back. Folks can can now get in on that settlement. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, there is uh, the five hundred million dollar settlement. That's but for Apple, it seems like they could dig that out of the couch, right? Five hundred million dollars, yeah, exactly. Like yes. today, and then they could find five hundred million more tomorrow in their couch. Seemingly, how it works. And, an interesting thing for you TV viewers and connoisseurs out there: NBC Peacock launches today. That's NBC Universal's uh, new entry into. The uh, over-the-top streaming industry. Um, it's very interesting that NBC is a longtime standard name in television and television production. Universal Studios as well. Those two together uh, have launched Peacock, and we could talk a little bit about uh, what that offers and what the price will be. It's they've got a couple of interesting tiers, and I like that they're pretty forthright. Um, like for example, I think they're. They have a a lot of the content you can uh, access for free with just an account, uh, an email and a password. Then there is a five dollar tier, which gets you um, basically all of the content there, but with ads. Uh, And then for five more dollars, essentially a ten dollar tier gets you all of the content ad free. But they do. They're pretty clear with the caveat that due to some rights issues, some of this stuff has to have ads anyway, and there's nothing they can do about it. So I, I think it's pretty interesting uh-huh. that they're that they're truthful about that, though. Yeah. Well, I don't get excited when I hear about new streaming services anymore. I kind of <laughs> shake my head going, OK. <laughs> and, I, you know, I got to say, Peacock, really? I mean, if I saw that pop up on my list of apps, I'd be like, hmm. Right. No, nope, not not really interested in Peacock. <laughs> yeah, I, they. I mean, I get it. It's you know NBC. That's that's been their logo for uh, you know a century, uh, almost. So I understand where they were going with that. But yeah, I think that they could come up with a more tech savvy, um, you know, or or, or you know, streamline uh, imaging for you know their product coming in. It is interesting. We've talked a lot about over the top streaming and. You know, we talked about how there were a handful of different companies that were trying to essentially present you the same thing as satellite or cable television um, over the Internet uh, by, you know, bundling all the channels and all the networks together and having a, in a traditional type channel lineup. Those things started off much cheaper than cable. The difference between those two has essentially vanished now. Mm-hmm. Um and so now we're seeing kind of a splintering of all of all of these. I mean, you can still pay for all of those content things together, but whether you do it through your area's cable provider or whether you do it online through a streaming service, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other now. And now you have the option to go more micro and buy you know specific companies 
uh, offers of streaming, you know, under their umbrella of production. Uh, and so we're seeing, you know, Hulu and now, you know, NBC Peacock. There's several others. But it is interesting now that we are getting, as we advance more into this, we're getting more and more micro offers. Of course, Disney Plus, of course, with ESPN and, and Hulu included with them. Uh, we're seeing more and more options to make your television watching more and more micro as opposed to just uh, an a la carte type service. I I don't love it, man. I, <laughs> I really don't. Um, I've got Netflix and I barely watch that as it is. I watch Hulu more than anything. And honestly, I could probably go for cutting all of them off now because they're just massive time wasters. You know, it is, it is interesting. My personal experience, and I know this is just my personal experience, uh, we've had YouTube TV almost since it launched uh, for $30 a month. Uh, it's basically $60 a month now. So in the two years that we've had it, the price has doubled. Uh, and it's it, the what we were paying for direct TV before that. It's still not even close to approaching that. So it's still a value right. versus that. But versus what we could pay uh, the local cable provider in Rankin County, Mississippi, Mm, difference is not that much. Um, right. And so that that's an interesting thing. And the thing is, my wife watches Bravo some, and I don't really watch TV any. Uh, I mean, most of the stuff that I watch is, is you know, YouTube content providers, you know, or, or games that you can find streaming just through a little searching, um, you know, sports games or stuff like that. Outside of that, not really watching much television. So us, you know, dumping $60 over to Google every month, it's not worth it. So, I mean, as soon as that, as that news a couple of weeks ago came out about the price jump, you know, I, 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 I texted her and I said, we got to figure something out. This is not worth it for us to do this anymore. So right. I know a lot of other people have to be in the same boat. So uh, it's not even a question of, and this is something we talked about, a, you know, a year or two ago about cutting the cord. It's not even a cutting the cord question anymore. It's how much do you watch and what's the best way you can find it for the cheapest amount of money? So it is interesting that in uh, television content, the question and how you scratch your itch continues to evolve uh, over time. Jeremy, the, the uh, SpaceX project gets closer to a private beta of its Starlink Internet service. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. I know that must be you must be happy for that. Yeah, we're getting well, oh, yeah. and everybody in Mississippi would uh, yeah, be closer to uh, being happy about that too. Um, and we talked about how folks are are able now to get in on this class action suit against Apple for slowing down the iPhones. An antitrust lawsuit is gaining a lot of steam against Google. That's not necessarily surprising to me. And in turn, they turned around and invested 4.5 billion into India's biggest mobile network. So that seemingly really, really took the sting out of their bite uh, over the last couple of days or so. We'll take our first break here. When we come back, we've got Scott on the phone from Jackson. And we'll take your calls as well. If you've got any tech issues, we would love to hear from you. If you've got any, if you called in in the past with tech issues and you've got an update for us, you got an answer, if you're still looking for that answer, we'd love to hear from you. one eight seven seven mpb ring is the number. That's 877-672-7464. Jeremy Thompson and I will be back after this break on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. You're listening to Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. To call the show, dial 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. This is MPB Think Radio.
This is Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. With Jeremy Thompson, I am Jay White. Wilts is out this week. You can call us 1-877-MPB-RING. That's the number, 1-877-672-7464. Jeremy, let's uh, get right into it. We will go to Scott, who we mentioned is uh, from Jackson. Scott, thanks for hanging through that time out for us. What's going on, man? Well, for my streaming, you know, I have Netflix. I got Hulu for a dollar fifty during Christmas time. Oh wow! I'm banned, but that's the one thing—the one with the commercials, though. But it's still dollar fifty a month for a year. Now I do stars; it's like eighteen dollars every six months. You know, and this is the thing. Like, and I know this—this this is just my personal experience. But the commercials don't bother me. I mean, I would rather yeah. pay a lesser amount and watch some commercials. You know, then have be commercial free for like sixty dollars a month or something like that. It does. It's. I mean, I don't know. I'm not in a hurry that much. But I, I, that's just my personal take. Yes. Yeah, no, so I'm so, Hulu a dollar fifty a month you can't beat that. No, you can't. Yeah. I hope y'all get it again. It's gonna renew. <laughs> All right, Scott. Man, we <laughs> we appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for calling. Okay. What were you gonna say, Jeremy? Um, I'm on the other side of that fence. I, I hate ads. I'll pay a little extra to uh, to not watch them, especially the difference between Hulu and Hulu Plus. Um, yeah, it's it's worth it to me to pay the difference. Okay, yeah, there you go. It's uh, different strokes for different folks, right? And and to me, it I think it's the value of it. If it's if it's an extraordinary amount to go ad free, eh, not worth it for me. But if it's if it's affordable. Then, yeah, I mean, but why not? Why not? So, I mean, I, I get where you're going with that. Let's stay on the phones. You can call us up, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. Alan is on the phone in Brandon. Call us. Alan, good morning. Hey, Jay and Jeremy. Yeah, I, I've got a quick question. I, I, I'm still using DirecTV, so uh, sorry about my caller ID. Uh, uh, but with all the cord cutting that everybody's talking about doing, the thing that, that I'm a little worried about, what kind of Internet service do you have to have since all this stuff's going to be downloading over your Internet, and it's going to take a lot of data, and a lot of them have data caps on them, and they they throttle you back and stuff like that. I, are, are we going to end up just paying a different company for, for Internet access to be able to stream all this stuff and using our money that we're saving from the cable companies or, or, or what? Because it would seem to me... To really get good service and to be able to view at least high enough quality video so that you know you can enjoy it, you're going to really need some kind of pretty fast internet service and, and pretty uh, uh, with no caps on it and stuff. So uh, I don't ever hear anybody talking about 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 that issue when they talk about cutting the cord. And I'm just curious what your yeah. thoughts are. Well, you need at least a three megabits per second uh, connection in order to uh, enjoy standard quality. Uh, and you need about five to enjoy a high definition. Um, your uh, AT and T DSL services; I, you, those are those are becoming antiquated, so you don't see a lot of those anymore. But those are typically not spiffy enough to handle more than one connection at a time, and you're probably going to run into some buffering just because those connections are just—I mean, they've always just been super slow. I've seen some that are half a megabit. Um, for people that are on, you know, cable or something like that, uh, it should not be a problem for anyone. Now, as far as people streaming from their cell phones, uh, most of uh, your 4G connection is going to be able to handle that. Um, but you're right. It's going to eat up your, your data pretty quick. And eventually you're going to go into that, quote, unlimited tier where they throttle you down to 3G. And then you're definitely going to have some issues watching Netflix. Um, right. So whenever we talk about cutting the cord, if you are viewing from your wireless connection from your cell provider, then you do always need to be mindful of how much data you are consuming. These days on your cell phones, your tablets, uh, there will be a, uh, a, a, a menu that will allow you to see how much bandwidth you're actually using, how much data you're using per app, and you can kind of keep an eye on that uh, as as you consume. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want people to be aware of that. that I mean, that that uh, a lot of times when people get caught up in stuff, they, they, they hear about saving money and they don't think about maybe some other uh, other hidden costs that could be involved. But yeah, that's perfect. Thanks so much, Alan. We that's appreciate very the call. Good point that Alan brings up there uh, because when you're when you're thinking about cutting the cord, you got to think about what that data costs you. And so streaming over um, 
satellite internet is generally not recommended and uh, extended streaming over your uh, your cellular providers network is also not really recommended again you can probably get away with doing unlimited for a while but it, at, at higher speeds um, but eventually they're going to throttle you if they haven't already um, I know a few years back they they were they were less uh, strict about this but a buddy of mine, um, he downloaded a bunch of PlayStation 4 games and stuff Ooh. over the ceasefire connection, and they called him up, and they were like, hey, you've used like 80 gigabytes this <laughs> month, so uh, we're cutting you off. Dude. You know, so you have to be, you have to be careful, because they will come find you. <laughs> oh, man. Then they called him up. Dude, what are you doing? Anyway, that's funny. Right? Hey, I, you right, know what? Trying I, to download the whole internet, guy. Come right. on! You're trying to download Belgium, uh, you know, on, on his monthly cycle. That's pretty funny, right there. I, I like. Hey, I, all for him trying to get in where he can fit in. That's pretty funny, right there. But it is interesting uh, the point that Alan brings up now, and kind of it plays into a little bit what we were talking about earlier. Since the price of you know over the top uh, streaming services that are uh, web only based have come up so far it has each time they raise prices it adds value back into cable companies that that offer internet in a bundle with it it's still probably way higher than it should be i know you probably have thoughts about that but it's still i mean at this point if you can if you can find somebody that can bundle those things together depending on how much you want to pay and how much content you want you know it's and, and how much TV you watch. I mean, like how many channels that you want to have the selection of. It's it's a value at this point, again, because of how far the costs have come on things like Sling and YouTube TV and things like that. One eight seven seven MPB ring is the number. That's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Let's go back to the phones. We have Craig in Biloxi. Craig, thanks for calling. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the uh, tech guy said he liked new stuff. I was researching something totally unrelated to electrical, but this is about uh, central processing unit coolers, and there's one that uses a Sterling engine. I was wondering if you are familiar with that. Uh, no. Do you have a name for it? No. You can you, you can Google there. You can Google. Uh, Sterling Engine and CPU together, and and there's a bunch of sites up uh, already. There's a bunch of places where you can buy these units. I was wondering if you had any experience and could review them because I have no idea how they work. I mean, how well they work. I, I, yeah. uh, I yeah. just Googled this. Uh, okay. I'm just seeing this for the first time. Um, they've actually been around for a – this one – this is an article from 2008. Um it's a very interesting looking apparatus that goes on top of your processor and it just uh, presents a, 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 apparently a more efficient way to keep it cool. Um, let's see. And there's no I'll liquid in it. That. I've, I've never seen one. Um, it, it looks very interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. I, would, I would love to know more about it. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Then uh, I, I, I was looking up, uh, Wikipedia has a really good site called Applications of the Sterling Engine, and that's where I found <clears throat> that's where I found the link to to electrical use. Very cool, very, very interesting, Craig. We appreciate it this morning. Thanks for calling in. All right, one eight seven seven MPB ring is the number eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Now here we go, the Duke of Desoto. We got Les on the line. What's going on, man? Hello, speak, this is Les. You speaking with me? Yes, sir. Les, how's it going? Oh, I'm well, thank you. Uh, just a, a quick thank you, actually. I asked a few weeks ago about a, a phone that would work for a visually impaired lady, and mm -hmm. uh, we found one. It's a Doro 7050. It only cost about $50, and she's as pleased as punch with it. So thank you. That's awesome. Man, that was, that's great to hear. That was a Dorgo? Yeah. The Dor D O R O. D-O-R-O. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Delta, Oxo, Romeo, Oxo, as we used to say in the Army. Um, but no, it's it's perfectly fine. She She's thrilled to bits with it, and uh, she's back in communication. And uh, we were just, she said, you ought to call them and say thank you. Absolutely. Last man, we're so glad to hear that, man. Anything else going on? 
Uh, not a great deal, no. Just count, <laughs> counting the planks on the wall like everyone else. <laughs> I totally understand. Hey, man, thanks for the update. We appreciate it. You're welcome. You have a great day. All right, you too. Good to hear from Les in DeSoto County again. All right, we'll take a time out here. We have Hal and Columbus on the line. When we come back, you can call us one eight seven seven mpb ring one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Still got to get into uh, a couple of stories, including Zoom coming out with a uh, a suite of home designed hardware. Zoom is going all in now, right? Planning on normal, never being normal again. So we're just going to build stuff. We're going to build you a Zoom living room, buddy. So you can just zoom all day. Anyway, and we also have uh, Sony announcing a huge uptick in production of the PS5. Uh, evidently because uh, the price that they introduced at, which was much more approachable than I thought it would be, a lot of people sitting in their homes, counting the planks like less, are going in on the PS5. We'll talk about that and more after this time out. This is Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. You're listening to Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. To call the show, dial 1 877 MPB Ring. That's 877 672 7464. This is MPB Think Radio. This is Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. Thanks for listening this morning. You can call us 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Java and I were talking during the break about how good this Doro 750 flip phone uh, that Les just called and talked about looks, about how we might uh, leave the future behind and just go back to this phone, this flip phone with some buttons and tells you the time on the front. You know, in my in my old man voice, these <laughs> kids will never know the day. I mean, these were the phones back back when they were the phones, the old school flip phone, and it was you work with what you had. And but it having was, to having to text with that thing, right? <laughs> Texting on the old candy bar phones. Now, I wonder if it has the, uh, the the game Snake on there. If it has Snake, then I don't know. I might have to get one. Fifty dollars. What's, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, time sweeper or, or whatever that was called with the bombs and the well, yeah, mind sweeper. Mind sweeper, mind yeah. sweeper, yeah. I never could get that. I never understood that. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> but yeah, man, remember texting with those candy bar phones, man. I was pretty sure I was going to have you know, carpal tunnel in my. You had to be really sure about what you wanted to say because you right. only had a limited amount. Yeah, before your fingers were like, you got to work. That's man. A, that's enough. <laughs> Burning calories if you're going to text like they text today. No, no. All right, let's go back to the phones. We got Hal, who's waiting through the break with us in Columbus. Hal, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, my question is: uh, I currently have services with AT and T for uh, cell phone, Direct TV for TV and spark lights for Wi-Fi and AT&T for a house phone. But yesterday, a day before, ceasefire later ran this cable up to my house, mm. uh, the fiber. So I was asking around, you know, and I hear, uh, I'm, I want you guys' opinion on the limitations. They tell me something about with the cable piece of that, uh, it's over a fire stick and streaming. I'm not a big streamer. What kind of limitations and outages are you guys aware of, you know, with that type of service? So you're asking about uh, fiber, and yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure as far as, as far as outages go. I, I really don't know. I don't have uh, fiber myself. I don't, I don't know close enough to get it, or I just don't want to budget for it, one of the two. Um, well, but I, the fiber connections that I have uh, experienced are super fast. Uh, so if you're not – a uh, big streamer or anything like that, you probably don't need a connection that spiffy. Um, I could not make out what you said you had for internet. I heard the ATT for cell service and direct TV, and then I think you said Sparklight? Cable One, which is used to be Cable oh, okay, One. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So if you're not a big streamer and you're already on a cable connection, that's a broadband connection. Um, right. I, Depending on what your speed test pulls, you can go to speedtest.net and hit go and do a little test. As long right. as you're pulling, um, I mean, it depends on your plan as to how much bandwidth you get. Uh, but generally, the lowest tier, at least with my local cable provider, is about 30 megabits per second. So you should be pulling about 30 at the minimum. Now, exactly. I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I, I do have um, the, the C Spire um, fiber in my neighborhood. I assume that's the person who's running it in your neighborhood. Right. Um, it has been... It has been very good, and uh, as Jeremy mentioned, the speed is, I mean, it's self-explanatory uh, because of just the, the advancement in the technology versus everything else available. As far as it going down, it's not been a big issue for me. The only issues I've had is when my computer goes into sleep mode when I bring it back up for some reason and it has trouble uh, reattaching, so I wind up having to unplug it and plug it back in. That's just a, that's a personal situation with my setup. You probably won't have to deal with that. The thing right. is, with, with C Spire, uh, I mean, if you're looking to cut back costs, number one, I would suggest, and this is just this is a personal preference, but you might want to look at taking your, your home phone out and using your cell phone as your home phone. That's a way you can save money right off the bat. Not everybody wants to do that, I understand, but that is an option that you can have. You're kind of killing two birds with one stone. And then the other thing is, if you're looking for Internet and television, uh, if you go with the C Spire, and I'm not sure about this. I should know this. But at one point, C Spire offered a uh, a box top cable service, so to speak, um, right. along with their their Internet providings. And if they still do, I should look that up. If they still do, I'm sure that you'll get a deal on a bundle for the two of those. Well, here's what they're offering me. Yeah, that package. And let me tell you what I'm paying now. I'm paying about 120 for a cell phone about 80 for internet with cable one spark light and then about 150 with direct tv so c spire is coming in at 125 max for cell phone keep the uh fiber and something else yeah. so that's why i'm doing it. i mean not only for the speed and all of that i mean all of these services i have up here spark light at&t direct tv you know, it makes sense to go to C Spire. I was just wondering how, you know, somebody, I was just trying to get an idea of what type of, I thought they were pretty good. I just wanted to hear. If, yeah, know. and I'll, I'll tell you this, and Jeremy made a reference to this last segment talking to a caller. They, they've they introduced, um, since I've got it, they've actually upgraded uh, the original uh, router that they put in the house. And the new router comes with an app uh, that, will give you readings of uh, your up speeds and down speeds, uh, what is connected to anything in your house. Uh, and it gives you, if you're a parent, it gives you the, the option to put any connection to anything in your house in timeout for a specific amount of time, uh, which is really cool. Um, and it, 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 it shows you what your speeds have been and if you've been down and if you're down it will, and you open that app up, app up, it will show you that if you're down. So you'll know that for sure. And, you know, you want to go ahead and uh, put in a, a service call to them. But um, it, it's not my job to say this is pro or anti that, but the C Spire deal for the speed it is, it's pretty good, especially if you get the bundle. And again, look, I was a direct TV subscriber for a long, long time. I loved the idea of satellite television. I mean, I, I was paying for that. I was paying for my own account of direct TV, still living in my parents' house when I was a teenager. That's how, that's how down with it I was. And, man, it's just for your options out there, depending on how much TV you watch and what TV you watch, direct TV is extremely expensive for the service it provides. Yeah. If you like it and if it's, it's, if, it's your, if it's your taste and then you don't mind paying how much it is for it, then and it is for you. And, folks – in the millions, do it. But if you are cost conscious, conscious, and you are not the biggest TV watcher in the world, there are tons of better options for you. Got it. And I would I would say um, if C Spire is offering you, offering you a package to combine all those things for like 125 bucks. Uh, first off, uh, that's that sounds wrong because it sounds like that's a, a super good deal. 
I would make sure that I understood all the terms. It's like, it's like an introductory rate and six months later or a year later, yeah. they're going to jack the price up on you because that's right. typically how all those kinds of things uh, are handled. Um, right. I will say be cautious of, you know, having all of your technology solutions in one basket. Sometimes that can be a bit of a double edged sword. Um, yeah, it, it, it sounds like a good deal what you've described, but I would I would look further into it to make sure that there's not some catch to all of it. And I will also say the fiber connections that I have seen have not provided any better speeds than most of the cable connections that I've seen in Hattiesburg with with Comcast specifically. The download and upload speeds are pretty much neck and neck with fiber, which blows my mind because it's not supposed to be that way. However, Why I just it? did a speed test on my own home internet connection, and I'm pulling 119 megabits myself, which is very, very good for a cable broadband connection. In fact, in these days, it's actually a little bit slow. I could pay for a higher tier, but I don't need it. That's overkill for me. Right. Okay. Got it. So, Hal, that's a lot to deal with. We put you, we put a lot of information at you right there. I hope you can uh, make heads and tails of that, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we appreciate the call from Columbus this morning. One eight seven seven MPB ring is the number. One eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Let's see, Jeremy. I'm I'm actually calling up this app now. Uh, it can tell me what's going on at my house. So it says right now. Yeah, what you got? My download speed is 900.46 Mbps. Okay, now that's what you're supposed to see. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's the speed that you're supposed to see. But I had people saying, "Oh, we've got C Spire fiber, and they were pulling less than 100 megabits to their building." I'm like, "Mm, "Something's wrong here. That's not fiber." Why would that be? Would it be is is the interface having to catch up with the technology? I think it's. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say too much here, but I, from what I could tell, it wasn't exactly true fiber, at least what I had experience with. They said it was something like fiber at the trunk or fiber at the line or fiber at the sh- street, something. I don't know. Maybe somebody from Ceasefire could call us and clear <laughs> that up because I asked, I was like, look, fiber is supposed to be gigabit internet. Yeah. And Jay's pulling 900, which is darn close to one gigabit. Yeah. We'll go ahead and say, give or take a margin of error in the in the measurements of the connections and network latency, that it's probably right on par with one gigabit. However, 100 megabits per second, that's nowhere near fiber speed. So what they were selling as, quote, fiber before was cable equivalent fiber from what I could tell. Very interesting. So depending on where you live, uh, and I know the... The fiber in, in Mississippi is rolling out slowly because basically it's one company doing it. And I understand it's an infrastructure deal. You can only do so much at once um, before you dive in on it um, in, in the different communities. You know, Tupelo, uh, I think Clarksdale maybe is one of the early places that that was offered on the Gulf Coast, certainly in the Jackson metro area. Ask around. Uh, you know, specifically, if your neighborhood is offering it, then you're probably going to have more than one person in your neighborhood that has it. Ask around and see what they're getting before you dive in on it. When I was uh, 16, Jay, I uh, you know I downloaded a lot of lot of stuff off the internet, and uh, I wanted to get a uh, a Linux distribution. You know, and Linux was is free most distributions anyway, so you can go straight to the distribution's website and download it. And the disk image that I wanted to download was like a gigabit, and my uh, my cable connection downloaded it in like ten minutes. I'm sorry, it was a gigabyte. Um, my connection downloaded it in like ten minutes, and I was like, "Wow, did y'all yeah. see that? I just downloaded a, a one gigabyte file in ten <laughs> minutes. You will be able to download that in a few seconds. That is amazing to me. It really is. It really is. We come along. I remember." Um, and I'm dating myself here, but back in the 90s, having AOL and a Windows 95 computer and downloading a wave clip of like 45 <laughs> seconds, and it taken like an hour and a half. Well, and then you play yeah, the clip, and it's low quality, and you're like, what? Anyway, yeah, absolutely. All right, hey, man, uh, SpaceX, uh, which is something you've been following closely and you are super hype about, no doubt, and the folks who live in the rural areas of Mississippi that give us calls on a near weekly basis with their issues. Um, this is, uh, it's listen up, here we go. They may soon give a select number of people who've expressed interest in hearing more about Starlink access to its satellite internet service. 
The Aerospace Corporation has sent some of those who previously signed up for more information on Starlink's website an email asking for their full addresses. It only previously asked for people's zip codes, but it needs their actual locations to know if they'll be able to participate in the technology's testing. In the same email, SpaceX has revealed that it will launch a private beta for Starlink this summer, followed by a public beta. Uh, Reddit user Bubby4j data mined Starlink's support website and found more details about the upcoming beta testing program. Based on the information they discovered, the program will be will begin in the northern United States and lower Canada, along with rural communities in the Washington state area. Further participants must have a clear view of the northern sky to participate since the 600 satellites it already deployed can only provide Internet access between 44 and 52 degrees north latitude. Uh, the Starlink dish uh, was also unearthed from Starlink's support page. Uh, SpaceX will send to testers as a part of a kit that needs the view of the northern sky to be able to communicate with those satellites. The kit also includes a router, which already got FCC approval, and a mount. And SpaceX warns that the connection will likely be intermittent at first as its team works to optimize the network and that testers will not be allowed to share their experience to the public. Okay, Testers also won't have to pay anything to be part of the program and will only be charged a dollar to help test the billing system. SpaceX has been sending Starlink satellites to orbit in batches since 2019. It's hoping to, in total, send up to 42,000 satellites into orbit by the time it's done in order to provide Internet access, even in the most remote areas on the planet. For 2020 in particular, it's planning to send two dozen Starlink launches that will add over 1,500 satellites to its current constellation of 600. Uh, Pretty interesting. How about that? We're getting closer. This this is very cool. Um, the, the very fact that the testers won't be charged, uh, except for a dollar to help test the billing system. That's, that's really, really cool. Um, I think at first this is, you know, they, they're, you know, they're, they're putting a cap on people giving their experience to the public because this is, this is experimental. You know, this is the first time anybody's done anything like this. Yeah. So there's a, a high margin for error. And until you actually put enough users on your network, you won't know what it can sustain. So this is great. I am going to keep my ear to the ground on this one, and I look forward to hearing more good news about Starlink. And I tell you what, if, if you are interested in doing it, if you're out there listening and you're interested in doing this, get to that website and, you know, sign up for the beta. I mean, all they could do is just not contact you. And then, you know, when the thing becomes available in more areas, maybe they'll reach out to people specifically in a state that has a large rural area part of it, like Mississippi. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure that's going to be – area that they need to test specifically because that's part of the specific reason for putting this all together is so that uh, at least in terms of uh, the the practical uses of it from America's standpoint of course they're way you know hotter spots in other parts of the world that need it way worse uh, than we do so I mean it is what it is but as far as America's application of this goes they need to see how it'll work in rural areas, and there's a bunch of rural in Mississippi. So I would sign up for it, and, and uh, you know, hopefully you can get put on a list sometime pretty soon. All right, we'll take a break here. That's we'll, Starlink.com. Starlink.com. We'll take a break here. When we come back, we've got more uh, of stories to get to over the last week or so in the tech world. We would love to hear your calls as well. 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Zoom's going to put a whole bunch of hardware in your house. You can zoom, you can zoom all the time. Don't even have to get out of bed. And Sony is upticking the uh, production of the PS5 and a whole lot more, including that Apple settlement that you can get in on for them slowing down your phones back in the day. One eight seven seven MPB ring eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four with Jeremy. I'm Jay. This is Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. You're listening to Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. To call the show, dial 1-877-MPB-RING. 
That's 877-672-7464. Or email everydaytech at mpbonline.org. This is MPB Think Radio. Welcome back. This is Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio with Jeremy I.J. Wilts is out this week. Long way to go and a short time to get there. we got a call in the meantime. Let's go to Rob, who is in Brandon. Rob, thanks for calling. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, it's Rob from Brandon. Uh, there were some uh, some uh, items that were, I guess, a little confusing about fiber, uh, ceasefire fiber. I'm a customer. I wanted to uh, call in and, and try to clear some of that stuff up. So in terms of the um, the fiber, residential fiber connection, ceasefire fiber to the home, it, it's a gigabit service, and I, I typically get between 900 and 950 megabits per second down, uh, as well as up, uh, which is real important because uh, I'm working from home right now, and uh, having that huge amount of bandwidth to be able to upload stuff to my office and my VPN uh, really helps out. And then the other thing I wanted to comment on was the, the, the C Spire uh, TV. Um, it, it's a really cool uh, uh, TV service because uh, it runs as an app on my Fire Stick or my Apple TV, and I don't need to pay C Spire to rent a stupid cable box anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I went ahead and bought that um, Fire Stick. And it's an app that runs on there just like ESPN or, you know, any of the other uh, apps that run on uh, your Fire Stick. So uh, even though the TV product is, you know, expensive, I think TVs are overpriced everywhere these Mm -hmm. days. Um, I I, I think at the end of the day, between the the amazing, fast, and reliable uh, Internet, you know, with fiber and then this not having to pay these cable box fees, uh, we end up saving a little bit of money, and um, our connection is just, it's up all the time. So I wanted to, to, to call in and uh, give a shout-out to a local Mississippi company who is uh, offering some of the best Internet I've ever experienced in my life. Thank you. All right, Rob, we appreciate the call uh, from Brandon this morning. So he's he, he lives close to me, and... In the same county, and he's getting uh, some of the same experience I have. It's interesting. I, I I did know at one point I thought anyway that the C Spire cable or the C Spire television offerings uh, actually had a like a hardware box top setup, and maybe that's maybe they've done away with that again. I probably need to search that up and learn whether or not they're doing that. But obviously, uh, you can load that onto you know whatever your your streaming uh, stick that you use. Uh, you can you can do it like that. So. Interesting. They're coming forward with that. All right. Uh, how about this? Apple warns customers not to close its laptops with a camera cover attached. Um, though it might strike some as an obvious advice, as obvious advice, Apple has published a support page that warns MacBook owners not to close their laptop with a camera cover in place. Damaged like a or, or damage like a cracked display could result, according to the company, because, quote, the clearance between the display and the keyboard is designed to very tight tolerances. Wow. So what do you, do you think so about that? Would you take that advice? Was there, or? Any, was there any subtext about them uh, having their beautiful devices defaced by third-party objects? Mm. You know, they're really they're, they're not <laughs> real happy about that anyways. Um, at this point, I think Apple needs to embrace the fact that people – want their privacy and they need to integrate some kind of a cover. If you can't even put one on there that uh, could potentially damage your screen. Right. Having said that, um, a piece of tape won't (laughs) and it works pretty well. And tape is Uh, pretty thin. Some electrical tape, just a little piece, you know, just right over that little hole. Uh, That should, that should do it. (laughs) Yeah. Tape is thin. Stay safe out there, Apple users. Yeah, absolutely. And you can now, uh, stake your claim in Apple's $500 million iPhone slowdown settlement. Still, every time I read that, I'm like, $500 million? Seriously? Uh, the well, battery... you got to get your penny. Right. <laughs> the battery gate saga was one of the bigger controversies Apple's ever faced. Throttling iPhones with aging batteries prompted a class action lawsuit, and now you can register to get your chunk of the settlement that was reached earlier this year. Uh, There's now a website where U.S. consumers who owned an affected iPhone can go to file a claim. 
to meet the criteria, you must currently or have previously owned an iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6S, or 6S Plus, and or an iPhone SE that ran iOS 10.2.1 or later before December 21st, 2017. An iPhone wow. 7 or iPhone 7 Plus that ran iOS 11.2 or later before December 21st, 2017. Wow. As uh, part of the settlement terms, Apple agreed to pay out a maximum of $500 million. The company will, quote, provide a cash payment of approximately $25 per eligible device. Though that number can Until- go down if the total number of approved claims exceeds the $500 million cap. Mm. I mean, you know, who's not going to put their name in that hat? Uh, how many iPhone users we got out there? Millions. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> right. So everybody enjoy your quarter from Apple. Uh, they're real sorry they did that to you back in 2017. Uh, they're even more sorry they got caught. Man, that's... I'm sorry. I'm very snarky when it comes to Apple, man. Um, that's incredible. Yeah. It, it was a huge crime, and um, I think they definitely should have gotten more punishment than that. But hey, yeah, I don't know who their attorneys are, but to be able to negotiate that cap at five hundred million, regardless of how many cases come forward, oh my goodness, that is some remarkable work by those fellows. All right, that's going to do it for us today, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Uh, Coming up next, we'll have Southern Remedy with Dr. Jimmy Stewart. And, hey, all the stories that we didn't have a chance to get to today, we'll put that on the podcast page of this show. And you can go to everydaytech.mpbonline.org.